It's hard to shake off a mother's influence. John Newton's earliest memories were of his godly mother who, despite fragile health, devoted herself to nurturing his soul. At her knee, he memorized Bible passages and hymns. Though she died when he was about seven, he later recalled her tearful prayers for him. After her death, John alternated between boarding school and the high seas. At times, he sought to live a Christian life through his own efforts, but his resolve always collapsed and he went deeper into sin. Pressed into service with the British Navy, he deserted, was captured, and after two days of suspense, was flogged. His subsequent thoughts vacillated between murder and suicide. I was capable of anything, he recalled. More voyages, dangers, toils, and snares followed. It was a life unrivaled in fiction. Then on the night of March 9, 1748, John, then 23, was jolted awake by a brutal storm that descended too suddenly for the crew to foresee. The next day in great peril, he cried to the Lord. Concerning that day, he later wrote, the 10th of March is a day much remembered by me and I have never suffered it to pass unnoticed since the year 1748. The Lord came from on high and delivered me out of deep waters. The next several years saw slow, halting spiritual growth in John. He left the life of a sailor and found work as a dock worker in Liverpool. Encouraged by his godly wife, Mary, he began studying Hebrew and Greek and preparing for the ministry. At 39, he was ordained and appointed to the Anglican Church in Olney, England. In the end, John Newton became one of the most powerful evangelical preachers in British history, a powerful foe of slavery and the author of hundreds of hymns. He wrote with incredible insight, yet his words were simple enough even for children. In 1779, he was appointed rector of St. Mary Woolnoth, a quaint church in the heart of London's financial district. Late in life, when his health was failing, he told his closest friend, William J. My memory is nearly gone, but I remember two things, that I am a great sinner and that Christ is a great savior. And they sang one of the final verses of his most famous hymn, the earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine. But God who call me here below shall be forever 